Hey everybody and welcome to the next installation for the project Build a Data Analysis Library from Scratch in Python. In this particular video we will be covering test-driven development. So we ended uh, the last video by creating our environment with the, uh, the Conda tool. Um, we did deactivate the environment at the end but I went ahead and uh, reactivated it. So make sure uh, Pandas Cub is always active whenever you're developing uh, in this project. Now if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see that the next section is on test-driven development with PyTest. So what exactly is test-driven development? Well, it's the idea that you write tests first whenever you begin a project or whenever you're adding a new feature to your software. You write tests first. So these tests will be failing tests. And then you go back and write the code that will pass the tests. So um, you do things a little bit in reverse than what you might normally, how you would normally approach a problem. So um, the idea is if you pass the tests, then you can feel fairly confident that your code will work in the future. So that's what test-driven development is all about. It's about writing tests first and then writing the code that passes them. Now, all the tests have already been written for you, and there are about 100 tests that you must pass in order to complete the project. Now, all the tests are in one file, this test underscore data frame dot pi file, and that resides in the tests folder. So if we look over here on the left-hand side, you'll see all of the files in this project, and you'll see here is the test tests folder, so go ahead and open up this test uh, data frame .py file. Now, it's not necessary to understand every last thing in here. You're actually not going to be editing this file whatsoever. But it is important to understand the structure of this file and um, how the tests are actually created. So the way this file is structured is that it, it is, uh, there are a number of classes. So um, so for instance, there's a test data frame creation class, and then underneath this there's a test selection class. Now those aren't the individual tests. The individual tests are the actual methods within inside each class. So every time you see a def, you know, you're creating a method within this class, uh, that is going to be a test. So this test input types is considered one whole test. This test array link is another test. This test underscore Unicode to object is another test. So there are several tests within this test data frame creation class. So it is these individual methods that are the actual tests, not the classes themselves. The classes simply work to um, you know, subdivide the project into um, you know, tests that are, that are related to one another. So we're going to be using the PyTest library to test our code. Uh, and we can do, the way we, the way we use this is there's a, a command line tool uh, that PyTest comes with that's also named PyTest. And we simply give it the, uh, the location of where the tests are located and it will run all the tests for us. Let's go ahead and uh, run these tests. So if we type in PyTest and then the location of that file, the test data frame.py file, it will run all the tests uh, for this entire project. Excuse me. <clears throat> I had uh, cheated and, and gave you, uh, d tested the answers, so let's go back and run all the tests. So they will all fail if you do this correctly. So you should have seen a bunch of red uh, letter F's that uh, filled the screen. So it says here 96 tests have failed. So there, there were uh, not exactly 100, but there's 96 total tests. They have all failed. None of them have passed. So the way this project works is that each step you're going to write a little bit of code and then you're going to test that particular code to see if it runs. Now, PyTest allows you to test 
um, uh, you don't have to you don't have to test all you don't have to run all the tests in this file so it gives you a way to test just uh, for instance run the test only in this class in, the, in one particular class so the way you do that is by running uh, the same command but follow it up with two colons and you say test data frame creation for instance if you would like to test just this class and so it will only run these nine tests in this particular class so they've all failed again now you can also just run a single test by appending two more colons than the name of the the name of that one particular test that you want so here we can run test input type so it's this one test that we're going to run and you can see here that we got a red F and that we have one failed. So we failed all of the tests. So we'll have to pass every single one of these tests in order to complete the project, like I said. Um, and that's how, you would, uh, that's how you would run one single test. Now, PyTest has this idea of automated test discovery. There are rules for this, which are predicated upon the actual names of the files and folders and classes and tests uh, with, within those files. So uh, if you're interested in this, these rules for automated test discovery, you can go ahead and click on this link and find out more uh, there. So we, it actually is not necessary to go ahead and write out the exact file location. If you just call PyTest itself, it will find all those tests. You've collected 96 tests and they're all failing. And so that is called automated test discovery and so we will be using PyTest frequently throughout the rest of the project in order to see if we have uh, written the code uh, to correctly uh, pass the test. Alright, so that's it for this one.